Welcome to Daytona Beach, Florida, home to America's premier muscle car showroom, Hankster's Hot Rods, where we own and house anywhere from 65 to 80 vehicles at any given time. If you are watching the vehicle we are about to present to you today on any other advertisement other than Hankster's uh, website, which is hanksters.com, please be sure to visit our website so you can determine whether th this is in fact a current vehicle that we have for sale. If you are watching this on YouTube, uh, on ClassicCars.com, on Hemmings, uh, this vehicle may no longer be uh, available for sale. We own all of our cars, so you're dealing directly with the seller. There are no third parties involved. We are not a consignment dealership. We welcome all of you to visit Hangster's Hot Rods to look at the vehicle you might be purchasing. We encourage all of our buyers to come in person. Uh, Daytona Beach is a, a great tourist destination. There's a lot to do here. Uh, it's, it's a fun two, three day trip, maybe even a week long trip. Uh, come check out your, our cars for yourself. Uh, check out underneath. We'll take it on a test drive. Have some fun. Hangsters.com. And uh, if you want to reach us by phone, it's 386-944-9219. Enjoy today's presentation. Okay, this is the uh, really impressive engine bay of a 1972 Ford Mustang Mach 1. Uh, this guy has a 351 Cleveland uh, HO motor in a Q code um, has the original intake manifold on it, cast iron, the original cast iron exhaust manifolds, <coughs> still retains its original um, auto light uh, quadrajet type carburetor, finned aluminum valve pans on it, uh, the correct hoses top and bottom for the uh, radiator, correct, let me see, flex fan the way they came, and a uh, uh, correct shroud that comes along with it, a uh, new washer bottle for the uh, uh, windshield, um, auto light battery, but this is a top. It's, 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 it appears to be an original equipment auto light, but obviously it is not. This is just a cover to make it look like original. New uh, starter solenoid on it. The correct air cleaner, cold air induction with a seal that mates up to the uh, hood, which is a ram air hood on this vehicle. The tags are gone, but um, there's the OK. Uh, insignia from uh, the inspector on the front of the valve pan cover just the way it would have been from Ford. All your decals and engine designations are all intact in the vehicle. The one up on the firewall, uh, inner fender panel here, shock tower, uh, everything just the way it should be. The correct horn in the front of it, the radiator core support is not disrupted in any way so that it shows that this guy's never been in any type of uh, trauma from what we can see. Has a new set of shocks on it. I can tell just by looking at the top of them. The uh, heat is still hooked up to the passenger compartment in the event that it would go to one of our northern uh, states. They'll need it up there, although this last winter nobody needed it up there. Um, really impressive engine compartment. Uh, silicone plug wires on it, original Presto Light type distributor in it. Um, alternator appears to be relatively new. There's there's not new belts on it, normally I'll put new ones, they appear to have been replaced so the uh, uh, belts are, are nice and fresh looking on it. Power steering and power brakes on this guy too. Really impressive engine compartment. And again, it's a Ram Air engine, a Ram Air system on it that is functional. Um, everything is painted just the way it should be. The decals are all in place the way they should be. No disruption in the front of it whatsoever. Really impressive engine compartment. We're going to show you the rest of this guy now. Okay, we're going to continue our presentation of a 1972 Mach 1 Mustang Ram Air car, 351 Cleveland. Look at the gap on this guy. We're really lucking out on these cars. I bet the last dozen we've done have been really spot on. Fender to the hood, same thing on this side. Look at that, nice precision fitment. No overlap or anything. There's no adjustment need whatsoever on the hood. Ram Air designation, like I said, this is uh, all painted. Uh, and clear it over. It looks like it, two separate paints, but when you feel it, you can't feel the uh, black over the uh, red. So someone's done a really nice job of uh, laying a paint job on this. It's certainly much better than a driver quality paint job, but we're not going to call it a show quality because it isn't. But it's certainly better than an average driver quality paint job and better than ever was installed by Ford in 1972. Again, nice fitment, nice finish, nice uh, paint on the front. The grill itself has no windows missing in it, uh, plastic grill, and of course, you know, your parking lights, nice and clear amber. 
front bumper, which is an elastomeric bumper. It's a plastic bumper cover on it. Usually these things from little tiny bumps here and there have some cracks and some stress marks in it. This one apparently does not, and nothing that I can detect anyway. Front spoiler the way it would be on a Mach 1. There's no pulls or marks or chips or anything whatsoever in it. Very nice dramatic front end on this guy, you know, very impressive. <coughs> Going down the side of it, again our Mach 1 striping is painted on, not decaled on, and you can't feel it. There's a lot of clear on this guy. Someone's done a really great job of installing that on there. I wonder if Mach 1, no, Mach 1 is a decal. This is paint, this is a decal. Um, Magnum 500 wheels on a set of uh, Goodrich tires on it, radial TAs, pretty much everyone's choice on these guys at this point. Again, look at the fitment of this and the door. Everything just fits as it should. The uh, windshield is a tinted windshield on it, correct wiper arms, aftermarket blades, uh, no distortion or anything on the uh, top of the dashboard. VIN tag, nice and legible and nice and clean and clear. Uh, roof, of course, you know, there's no, there's never any marks on a roof, very seldom. Trim around the front windshield, really nice and clean. Sport mirrors, a pair of them, left and right. Uh, drip rail, no marks, no broom handle marks or anything on it. Look at this. Look at the front window to the quarter glass. There's absolutely no way you can get that to fit any better than it does. Uh, chrome on a handle, usually these are deteriorated some, this one is not, it is absolutely like it's brand new. Again, look at the door fitment, front and back. It can't get any better than that. And clean down onto the rocker panel. It's as precise as it could possibly be. Wipes whiskers are nice and fresh, the rubbers are nice and resilient. Um, they did a great job on putting the striping on. I'm really impressed with that. That, that really looks great. Those Magnums, you gotta you got love them. I mean, they're just the wheel to have on these cars, these and the Mopars for sure. Going around the back end of it, uh, trunk fitment, look at it. It's the same as it was on the hood. Just as nice as you could hope to find. Uh, of course, the rear spoiler is also gloss black like the uh, uh, hood treatment. Uh, hat rack, which you probably won't see it. You can't see out of the back of this anyway. Um, but the hat rack is nice and fresh looking. It has a set of uh, aftermarket auxiliary speakers in it. Trim around the uh, rear light which is tinted also from what I can see. I'm gonna call it tinted, but it may not be. Looks like it in here anyway. Um, it, it, the trim is just as sweet as can possibly be. Another decal, this is not painted on, but this is. Rear uh, fascia, just as nice as you could ever hope to find. <coughs> Trimmer <coughs> around both tail lights. There's no deterioration on its anodized aluminum. It's as fresh as could ever hope to find. Bumper fitment in the back is just spot on. There's no marks or scuffs or anything whatsoever on a chrome. Uh, quick release gas lid. Dual pipe slash cut out the back just the way you would expect to find on a 72. And the rear valance is just as fresh and nice as can be. There's no pull marks or dents uh, or deviations in it whatsoever. Getting in the trunk, how about this? We have a spare tire and a jack and a fire extinguisher. Uh, this is a very nice car. It's not an average car at all. Uh, the trunk itself is nice and clean. Uh, the floor nice and solid. Everything on this car appears to be nice and uh, uh, nice and solid. Just everything you look at, it, 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 everything is done to the nth degree. Nice uh, resilient rubber on it. You know, we forgot. We're going to go back and we're going to do the the door because we forgot to do it. Nah, we'll do it on this side. Then we'll show you the interior on this side. Um, Going up the passenger side, again, our painted on stripe is nice as you'd ever hope to find. The side marker lights are nice and flush the way you would hope to find them too. Again, drip rail molding, no marks or dinghies or uh, nothing whatsoever on it. Look at this fitment on this window though. This is really unusual to find a car that has that precise a fitment. We've been finding a few of them here lately. Again, look at this door gap, totally amazing. Chrome on a handle. Should have done this on the other side, but we're going to do it on this side and try to take a little bit more time. Again, new uh, seals, nice and resilient. The lumber on the dash and on the door panels, which are molded panels, uh, nice and fresh looking. There's no deterioration. A great original style interior in it. Red to match the outside with the red carpet savers. They're fantastic looking in this vehicle. The dashboard, everything is nice and clean and clear in it. Wood grain steering wheel, which is a rim blow wheel. We'll show you that once we get inside. Console with the automatic selector on it. Uh, everything in this car is absolutely as fresh and clean and new as you'd ever hope to find in one of these guys. The, uh, hey, the headliner's red too. 
you got to like red because this guy's got a lot of it and it really looks great in it. And nice accents with the black, you know, black carpeting, black accents on the outside, the striping, uh, down along the rocker panels, the Mach 1 designation, everything in black. It's a great, great looking car. And again, look at this. It can't get any better than that. We haven't found anything yet that we have to adjust. There's our right hand mirror, which is a great addition. Look at that gap. It's as absolutely as precise as can be. Look, every, every fitment on this car is spot on. The correct tile, uh, rectangular single mast uh, antenna, which would be correct for 1972 on this guy. Again, look at the striping on this thing. Just as nice and precise and the side marker lights, all four of them just right on the money. This thing's a 1972 Mach 1 Mustang, 351 four barrel Cleveland. Uh, automatic steering and brakes, great color combination, phenomenal car all over. I mean, I, I went over it, you just watched us do it, Devin and I walked around this entire car. I uh, didn't find any marks, chips, dings, no imperfections in the side of it, uh, no imperfections in the hood. Uh, again, you know, we're talking driver quality or better, and this guy is certainly better than a driver quality car. But it's a very desirable car, and it's here at Hangsters in Daytona Beach, Florida. And uh, if you have the opportunity, and want a 1971-72 new generation Mustang, this is a guy you better take a look at because it's a really phenomenal condition vehicle and it runs just as well. Hangsters in Daytona Beach. Okay, this is the underside of our 72 Mach 1 Mustang Q code four barrel 351 Cleveland engine. A heavy duty sway bar in the front, a disc brakes in the front also, nice fresh looking calipers, the rotors are nice and thick uh, steering box, I'm going to say the steering box has been replaced. Uh, it may have been, may not, but it kind of looks like it has been replaced. Uh, tie rod ends are very, very nice on it. The ball joints uh, don't show any uh, indication of uh, being loose anywhere. Newer shocks in the front, newer shocks in the front. The um, engine has no leaks whatsoever. It appears to have been out and freshened up. And it is a correct date and a correct number engine for this car. Uh, we can't get to the actual numbers on the back of the block. It's almost impossible because where the block mates to the transmission is where the actual serial number is on the driver's side. It's just totally impossible without separating the two to get to it to take a look at it. So we know it's a correct day code. We know it's a correct engine for this year of car in a, uh, a 351 four barrel. That we do know. The uh, transmission you can see also has no leaks whatsoever, heavy duty tranny in it. Cast iron exhaust manifolds transitioning into, yeah, I'm going to call them two and a quarter inch primary pipes going back. Um, conventional starter on it, idler arm, pitman arm are both real nice and tight. There's no indication of uh, any looseness there. Uh, and again, take a look at this because there's, at this point there are no leaks on the engine, the transmission, uh, or the uh, tail shaft for the transmission. That's not to say in the future there's not going to be because it's a muscle car. It's like a Porsche. You can guarantee yourself that there's going to be some oil dripping on the floor. But um, at this point there isn't. The undercarriage appears to be all intact and original. Your subframes are very, very nice and solid. There's no uh, indentures on them whatsoever for being jacked up correctly through the years. The sound deadener installed by Ford, that splatter crap that they put on these things is actually a sound deadener, not a uh, a rust preventative and uh, it's still intact it is it, it's still the original stuff that came from Ford torque boxes in the front are nice and solid there's no deterioration whatsoever one thing I do see the clip that holds this fuel line on has to be re-snapped into place to hold that fuel line up that's something we have to do uh, parking brake original and functional so the floorboards going back you can see how nice they are they're they're totally distortion free they're not uh, smashed up in any way or deteriorated where to go on to the rocker panels is nice and fresh uh, you can see the crimps where the uh, spot wells were put on flow master mufflers uh, two and a quarter going into flow masters um, it has a uh, uh, it's an eight inch not a nine inch ford rear end it's an eight inch ford rear end new shocks in the back they look like monroe's because they're blue uh, heavy duty drum brakes in the back to coincide with the discs that you have up front. Nice curvature to the rear springs on this thing. They have a real nice curve to them. 
the uh, gas tank. I'm going to call it original because the lines and everything come out of it still appear to be the original lines. Uh, these are two and a quarter pipes going back into the uh, slash cut mufflers also. Drop dies in the quarter panels are really, really nice. You can still see the spot welds <coughs> where they were installed. No leaks on the rear differential. Um, newer U-joints back and front. And again, look at this. There's absolutely no leaks at this point. This is amazing. But don't worry, you'll have them a year or two from now. Um, whole fresh round of rubber on this thing. BFGs, nice big huge set of tires in the back. Uh, and a smaller set up front, but all four of them are absolutely brand new. Uh, Donnie will give you the sizes and the spec sheet. You can see the engine designation. Everything on it will be on the spec sheet for you. This thing is a really nice original looking car underneath. I mean, it, it, it has a lot of integrity to it. The entire vehicle is a, a nice, fresh, other than one little line that we the clip came loose, we have to go ahead and reinstall. Other than that, I can't find anything underneath this car. Oh, also the torque boxes in the front of the springs are nice and solid too. They're not all bent up from people jacking it up through the years. You know, we, we encourage everybody to come down and take a look at these cars in person. Um, Devin puts up almost 100 photos or sometimes even over 100 photographs, high resolution of these cars. Undercarriage, interior, exterior, everything. Plus we do a drive video and an interior video for you. But it's still better if you come down in person and take a look at them. But if you can't, that's why it's going to take him about five hours to compile all this data that we generate so that you can see it and it helps you in your decision on buying a car from Hangsters in Daytona Beach, Florida. Okay, this is the control room of our 72 Mach 1 Mustang. Um, red, 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 red with all kind of black accents. It's really a great car. Rim blow steering wheel. How about that? Wood grain and anywhere you want to do the rim blow steering wheel. Uh, tachometer is functioning as it should. Speedometer we know is going to work. Jeff gave us almost a quarter of a tank of gas, but not quite. Uh, turn signal left. Just blinking away here. Turn signal right. Doing its act over on this side. Uh, check this out. Tilt steering wheel. Uh-huh. Pretty neat. Oil pressure uh, real nice and high, just the way it should be. Amp gauge charging as it should be. Also, our temperature gauge is functioning. It's coming up just the way it should. It, uh, we just started this a few minutes ago. The clock is not working, and you don't have to worry about the radio working because there isn't any. And uh, we're going to leave it that way. That way, whoever buys a vehicle can install whatever sound system they choose. It seems like when we used to put radios in cars, whatever we put in, somebody tore out and threw in the garbage anyway and put their own sound system in it. So. You have your choice of sound systems on that one now. Wipers, just beating themselves to death out there, working just the way they should. Um, remote control mirror, and it also functions. So let's go for a ride, see how this guy runs. Okay, this guy goes down the road just as straight and nice as you'd ever hope to find any car. This thing is spot on as far as the tracking goes. You gotta aim right there. It's just a really, really nice car. The steering is very precise. I mean, you move this thing a half an inch and the car responds uh, really great. Uh, the speedometer is working as it should right now. We're kind of going to slur as a lot of traffic out today. Uh, but a really nice, tight running car. There's no uh, no sloppiness whatsoever. Now what we're going to do, uh, brakes, no hands. See how that works. There it is, brakes, no hands. Back to a stop. Still don't have any hands on it. I'm giving the gas, I still don't. And it pulls like a freight train. The car runs really strong. Nice running 351 Cleveland. But these motors were really overachievers. Um, big port heads on them. Um, great designed engine. This head design is basically uh, what Chevy called their SB2 head. All it was was a copy of a uh, 351 Cleveland head that they used in their small block second design, which was a NASCAR uh, engine. And if you look at all the NASCAR motors, most of them are pretty much a copy of a, uh, a 351 uh, engine. Yeah, I pulled out in front of us over there. We got one. really well it's 
shifts nicely. Uh, there's, it's the most precise steering. I can't believe how this car tracks, how well it tracks and, and, and how precise the steering is on it. I mean, that, that box that's on it, that steering uh, box, is, it has to be a high resolution box because there's no way that a, a car that's sold with power steering has this kind of resolution. This one does. It's a great car. It's real comfortable. The seats have a nice pad to them. Uh, interior is beautiful in this car. Everything, the headliner, the dashboard. Uh, there's no uh, there's no indications of wear at all in the car anywhere. Even the trash tray is clean. Look at that. You got a clean trash tray in it for your change. Glove compartment on the console. I mean, everything is just the way it should be. This is a very nice car. If you're in the market for a 351. Uh, Mach 1 Mustang, 1972, 71, 72, looked almost exactly the same, then this is your guy. You better take a look at this one because this thing, uh, other than a couple of little tiny things, we can't find anything else. This is the, it's a very nice car. I doubt you can find a nicer one than the one we got here at Hangsters in Daytona Beach, Florida.